This is a video for A3.1 on diversity of organisms. We'll focus specifically on species diversity, and this is all part of the standard level or core content. Variation is a distinguishing feature of living things. Even within a species, there's lots of variation. For example, you and I probably don't look um, exactly the same or have exactly the same qualities. Even identical twins who have the same DNA do show variation, especially in terms of their genetic expression. So that's covered in another topic. Variation is one of the conditions that must be met for evolution by natural selection. And we'll see this play out in many different topics throughout this course. Since this video is about species diversity, we need to have a good understanding of what exactly a species is. And species is much more complicated uh, to define than we originally thought. From a creationist point of view, each species was created and then nothing changes and everything remains the same. We have lots of evidence to the contrary of that, but when thinking about that creationist point of view, a lot of species were defined based on their morphology, based on their anatomy, how they looked. And that's because species do tend to share similar traits. But one of the things we know about biology is that species also change over time. So defining them by just how they look right now might not be the most reliable way to do that. Now, what you're going to notice is that each species has a unique binomial name. So by meaning to, gnome meaning name. So each species has a Latin name or a scientific name or a name made from binomial nomenclature. All of those terms mean the same thing. And the reason that we use those is because they are internationally recognized. For example, I might call this plant a white clover and you might call it something entirely different. And then it's hard for us to communicate, especially if we speak different languages. But binomial nomenclature or scientific names are internationally recognized. So it's a great way to promote international mindedness. There are some rules for writing these uh, binomial nomenclature uh, names. So here are the rules. You will use an organism's genus and species. So that's why it has two names, genus and species. Those are the most specific pieces of its taxonomy or classification. The genus, which will be the first name that you write, is capitalized and the species name is not. So I put this example here of Trifolium repens. Trifolium is the genus, and the species is repens, and we'll notice that the species name is not capitalized. If it is typed, you are going to type it in italics, so this is very nicely done here. If you are going to handwrite it, please don't try to handwrite in italics, that's just nuts. Um, so you will go ahead and write it as you normally would, so trifolium repens, but instead of putting it in italics, you will underline it. So handwritten species names, yes, even on your exams, should be written properly, and that means underlined. Um, after you've written the full name first, you can abbreviate it next time with just the first letter for the genus name and then the full species name. So instead of defining a species as individuals that just share common traits, we're going to define it biologically. And that means that we'll denote a species as a group of individuals that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. And this word fertile is really important to this definition. Okay, because that means that the offspring has to be able to have babies of its own. Now, let's take a look at this really cute animal here. This is a zorse, and a zorse is the product of a zebra and a horse, and they can make a baby, they can interbreed, they can make offspring. But this zorse is sterile, and that means that it cannot have babies of its own. So that tells me that the zebra and the horse are not the same species, okay? So something has to be able to produce fertile offspring to be considered the same species. Now, <laughs> there are exceptions here, and it's really not a perfect system using this definition of species as it is. 
And one of those problems is that it's very, very hard to tell the exact point in time when those species can no longer interbreed. Okay, so let's define another word here. We'll talk about a population. A population is a group of the same species living in and interacting in the same area. And again, remember species means that they can interbreed. Species tend to diverge, okay, one species diverging into two, when they do not interbreed. Those two populations may still actually be the same species if the only reason that they are not interbreeding is just because they're separated. So what that means is that if they're not interbreeding because there's something separate them, but I put them back together and they can still make fertile offspring, then they should be considered the same species. But if I leave them separated over long periods of time, it's likely that they are going to evolve in different directions due to the differences in their environment. Now, this is very gradual. So again, it's difficult to decide when exactly those species are separate. And so you can start to see here some of the um, holes <laughs> in this definition that we have for a species.